Mark O'Connor Band, and that was a little excerpt of what I play when we play Ruby uh, in our band. And that driving rhythm is called chopping. It's a technique that you can do on the violin. And I get asked so much about how to do this technique. Um, and so I wanted to create a little video so that you can start to learn on your own how to do this really empowering technique. I love chopping because it gives me the power of the mandolin or the guitar within a band setting. It creates this cutting sound within an ensemble that really carries and you can also play chords within this chopping technique. The violin becomes the guitar. You finally have the power to control the rhythm and the chords and you can even sing and chop. In book four, there is a duo called St. Louis Blues and it's actually all written out. There's a vocal line on top of a chopping line and it sounds like this. If I'm feeling tomorrow, like I feel today, yeah, I'm feeling tomorrow, like I feel today. I'm gonna pack my truck and make my bed away. So I hope that all violinists discover this technique because. It's really opened up a lot of doors for me. I basically feel like the O'Connor method helped me learn how to chop. It spells it out so beautifully. And we actually are gonna have a string camp in Charlotte, North Carolina this summer. Uh, I have a little flyer here. It's something that I needed to be able to ask questions about. So I'm gonna be doing a chopping class at the camp. But before then, you can check out this video and kind of get your feet wet with it. So the technique I was doing in Ruby is actually one of the simplest patterns. So I'm going to start out by showing you what I was doing. And it's basically a combination of three strokes. I do a bow stroke, it's a down bow stroke, and then the chop and the lift. So the chop stroke is typically always a down bow stroke, and then the, the lift is always an up bow. So in a sense, it's really a down, down, up stroke in a pattern over and over again. And it creates that driving rhythm. In book two, you'll see that the chop is notated as a down bow stroke with an X as the note head. And then the lift is notated as a rectangle with an up bow, um, on a rectangle note head. So if I was to do the chop, I'm going to pick um, two strings to do it on. Uh, let's pick the G and the D string. And for now, I'll just mute the strings um, with my left hand. When you chop, it's a down bow stroke. I'm only using about this much bow hair. And I just land the bow on the strings like this. And the reason I'm getting that woody sound, I'm making it stick. I'm not lifting it because that's gonna be your lift stroke later on. So when you do the chop, you just land it and stick it there. And it's actually that sound that your teacher told you never to make on probably at your first violin lesson. It's that. It's that. Um, it's that gritty gripping of the strings with your bow. And, but you're only gonna focus that and you're gonna control it in about this much space. And what I'm also doing is uh, the bow hair is facing away from me, so it's kind of like I'm going this direction. And I'm straightening my thumb as I go down. You just land it on there. So that's your chop stroke, where it's the X note head, down bow stroke, you're there. You got the chop. After you got the chop, you're gonna just lift it up like so. That's your lift stroke, which is notated by the rectangle note head. So you have your chop, lift, chop, lift. I like when I do the lift, I like to curl my fingers in, back in. Um, it gives you a little more bounce, a little more control.
Now, after you get your chop and your lift, try it on an open G and D string. And get a rhythm going with that. One of the secrets to it is also just being able to keep it in a consistent rhythm. Working with a metronome is really great for that. So in book two, we actually introduced the chopping technique in a piece called El Rancho Grande. And it introduces beautifully the chop stroke and the lift, chop, lift. And I would show it to you if only I could have the melody being played. comfortable getting those strokes down It'll, it might take you a while to get the motor skills down it, it's a new technique that's fine after you master the chop and the lift or at least start to feel comfortable with it you can add a down bow stroke before your chop lift so basically what that is I'll pick my G and D string again so I'll do a down bow chop lift to our string camp and hone your skills with me in the class and um, we can play some duos together. It works really great for accompanying any kind of song, especially fiddle tunes. Um, sounds great on Boil 'em Cabbage Down. And what's great is that the books also all have all of the chords over every single song. So you can incorporate doing these chop rhythms over any of the songs and voila, you have a duo. One of my favorite things about chopping is that you get to play with other people. So it works so great with a friend. I highly recommend checking out book five and the seven violin duos book. It looks like this. Um, I, I would say that Jerusalem Ridge and Swing Low Sweet Chariot really developed my own chopping. Very much so. It's all incredibly written out. I'll play a couple of excerpts of those for you so that you can see how it's done. So this is Swing Low Sweet Chariot. Chopping patterns too. Let's see. Just 
some more chopping patterns to add to your chopping repertoire. And then, once you learn these patterns, you can actually improvise with them. So I hope that gives you a little insight into the whole chopping technique. Um, whenever I would give a class at the camp, uh, the, I would give a demonstration and the whole class was full of iPhones uh, filming me. So I figure that content really needs to be released out there for students to kind of study and, and I hope you enjoy this intro to chopping video. chopping rhythms and um yeah <laughs> your shadow's right there okay here we go <laughs> da, 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 da. 